Hi everyone, this is Mike, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about corporate wellness using choice theory or reality therapy from William Glasser. Um, and again, in this series of corporate wellness, uh, there's been a lot of stress with work. People feel very overwhelmed. There's a lot of procrastination, imposter syndrome, um, and <clears throat> lack of motivation. Um, People feel a little lost. Uh, people feel like they want to have more meaning in their lives. And so <clears throat> this is another way of using some techniques to help people uh, deal with the issues at work. Now, in choice theory, the idea is that we have, we have needs. We have five basic needs. The physical needs, survival, security, stability, safety, that's one. The need for love and belonging, for connection, right? The need for freedom, feeling independent, Autonomous is if we have choices available to us. Um, the need for power, <clears throat> by power, that means really feeling productive, successful, accomplished, achieving things. Um, also within that, and I kind of separate these two a little bit, it's uh, also the need for meaning and purpose in life. Uh, and then the need for fun. And usually that means, you know, leisure, fun, activities, but it could also be, uh, be learning, um, learning used to be fun. When we were kids, we, we got excited about learning in a, anything and everything. And then we went to <coughs> school and school seemed to sap that love of learning and uh, out of us and it was a lot less fun. So anyway, the idea is that we want to have these, these, these five needs met. And you assess at what level does a person have that need. So for example, on a scale of one to ten, is there a need for love and belonging a ten? Uh, is it an eight? Is there a five? And you, you assess, you know, again, person's need level, and then you compare it to where they're at now. So if their need for love and belonging is a nine, and they're at a two, well, that's a big problem. It's a big gap between what they need in their life and where they're at. But of course, it's not just the name of categories. When we think about love and belonging, we have pictures of what that represents, and that's really what we're comparing it to. So when you think of love and belonging, there may be hundreds, if not thousands, of pictures that show up in our mind. And we're constantly comparing that to what's going on in the real world. So if in your quality world, your ideal world, it's getting together with friends, family, having uh, friends over for dinner, going to a movie, barbecue, um, hanging out. And then in the real world, none of that is happening or maybe you're just talking to them uh, over the phone or texting. There's a big discrepancy between your picture of what an ideal love and belonging is and what the reality is. Same thing with work. If your ideal is that you're, you're respected, you're doing good work, you're doing meaningful work, maybe you have like corner office, it could be even something like that. People come to you as, as a respected uh, professional and in the real world you're just languishing away in a, in a basement office somewhere or in a cubicle. Again, there's that disconnect between what's really going on and what you ideally would like to go on, uh, have go on. And when there's a gap that creates some distress in us, and we try to bridge the gap, we try to make the real world closer to that quality world. Or sometimes we need to modify the quality world. An example is if, if a person that you love is in your quality world, and then they pass away, well, you can't make the real world match the quality world, right? The person, the person that's in your quality world is no longer here. You can't fix that. So you have to kind of modify the quality world image to represent the current reality, that, that their memory is there, um, their positive um, experiences are there, but physically they're, they're no longer there. So either you, you, you modify the quality world to some extent, or you try to get the real world to match the quality world, or a little bit of both. Um, and so you do this by the things that you do. So you, you, uh, there are certain actions that you take, certain thoughts that you think. This is where cognitive behavioral therapy comes in. What are you doing? What are you thinking that, that assists in this? Um, physiology, what's your body doing? Um, and then your emotions. So the same thing goes on in the corporate world. If there's a gap between what you want and what you have, we're motivated to fix that. And is what we're doing effective or ineffective? So we have this strategy that we use that we say, okay, so what do we want, right? What's our goal, right? We have some kind of problem, some kind of adversity, some kind of issue, and what do we want? What's our goal in regards to the adversity? What do we want? Then the second is, well, what are we doing to address what we want? So, and then we evaluate, is it working? 
and then if it's not, we come up with a new new plan, um, a new action. So uh, again, what do we want? What are we doing? And doing again, cognitively, behaviorally, physiologically, emotionally. Um, is it working? Uh, yes, no, a little bit, and then change. Come up with a new new strategy or new new plan. Um, so this is broadly speaking how we use choice theory um, and reality therapy in helping people deal with issues that are uh, challenges related to the work or corporate world. Uh, obviously, like like all the theories and therapies we've talked about, um, the devil's in the details. It's it's a lot more nuanced and subtle and sophisticated. I'm just kind of giving a broad overview and and what exactly we do specifically is again part of it is is uh, there are general strategies, but a lot of it's just based on the individual issue as well. So I hope this was helpful and uh, I will see you on the next video. Thanks.